and I'm not going to edit this at all. Um, I love what Jason was saying about editing, but uh, uh, I found uh, that that careful structure and uh, pointed uh, intent are very appropriate for my professional work. Um, but empirically, I found that, that in speaking, the more I plan, the less fun it is for anybody. And uh, I'm better just blurping up what comes to mind and what works best uh, with the audience. So you being the audience, I'm going to try to work best for you. So if it gets boring, just let me know. Uh, I'll do something else. Or, or uh, There was one talk where I said that if it got boring, I would take off my pants. But I'm not wearing appropriate underwear for that today. So, so I cannot make, make that threat. threat. Promise. Um, this, uh, the uh, goal of, uh, of what I'd like, like to, talk to talk to you about, about is uh, basically around the topic of art and trying to pull off art and figure out what it is um, in the face of technology and business. Uh, I'd like to have this in some way make your day a little bit better instead of a little bit worse. And if we can do that, then that's a good talk. Um, so I'm going to mix in some things. I'll probably tell some stories about myself, because I like those. Uh, I'll probably play you some music and some noises, show you some whiz-bang technology, uh, answer questions. Does anyone want to start with a question? Is there something just dying to, somebody who's dying to know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I am wearing kind of speedos sort of stuff. Okay. I yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there's a little rash there, I think. A tattoo of your mom. Yeah, that's the face she's making too. Um, and uh, let's see. And other than that, these impertinent people. Um, how many of you guys are actually music makers? How many of you guys make music? Okay, how many of you are part of the demo scene? Very interesting mix. How many are primarily coders? Oh, this is a deathly mix. <laughs> okay, uh, I really, uh, if I, I'm going to treat you guys as my peers, okay? I'm going to assume that you're like about three times smarter than me. That's as close as I can get to considering you're my peers. I, I, I'm going to try to talk to you as though I'm not going to lecture you about what art is. I'm going to try to put out some of the ideas that I think might be cool, might resonate with y'all guys. Um, my idea about what art is, uh, or at least with music, um, what happens is everyone's given this sort of gift from God, this ability to uh, make a noise. And uh, you know, I make a noise, and without any words at all, abracadabra, now I, the feeling that was in my heart gets into your heart or something like it. Whether it's the same feeling, whether it's not the same feeling, something has opened up. Some, some uh, preconceived ideas are gone. And we realize, oh my God, there's something invisible happening here. Okay? There's something that can't be described, um, that can't be done any other way other than hearing this music. So basically it's a, it's a neat little magic trick we've been given. Uh, to allow each other to communicate at a deeper level that goes past words. Uh, I think a lot of times art just boils down to peekaboo. It boils down to setting up an expectation and then either delivering it or not delivering it. Uh, you know, ba 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 bum. Well, that's a good ending, I guess. You know, ba 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 bum. Oh, what the? What's what, what's he? What's you know? Why is, why is there two? Why do you do the same thing twice? Ba, 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 ba. Oh, it's a theme. So we're basically going, I'm over here. No, I'm over here. Peekaboo. Ah, I see. And, uh, uh, but, but we try to do it in a, in a way that's delightful, or at least that, that breaks us open into this uh, invisible world. I think you guys are in a very unique place as the demo scene because you seem to have come to an enemy that the gaming scene went up against and failed miserably to resist. And that is that the game guys uh, went into the arena of making entertainment and art and they saw the technology and they said, oh dude, this technology is awesome. And they just kind of like stopped thinking about what's beautiful and what's cool, uh, what's, what's artistic. 
They, they just lost that. They lost the power of boo and oh boy and, and uh, ow my heart and ow my balls. You know, and they turned it into uh, all right money and uh, more is better. Um, I don't know if you guys have the, the isms in the demo world, but I know that the game guys do not. In movies, you say, well, you know, it's a, uh, you start with a scalpel and end with an axe. And uh, in music, we say, well, it's not so much producing as it is reducing. And, you know, we've got all those things, but in games, they just are like bigger boobs. And it's, it's like Warcraft, only it's got seven races. Um, and I wanted to kind of come here and lecture you demo folks on, you know, what is beauty and what is art, but no. Uh, you all have a good grip on the real bottom line, which is that you're doing stuff that makes you laugh your drink out your nose. And you've got to hang on to that no matter what happens. That is the thing. When you look at somebody's... See, when you go to the game business and people go, well, George, you don't realize how much money we're going to make off of this. I said, that guy's an asshole. He's the devil. Walk away. Okay? What the artist sounds like in games, in software, is what you guys sound like, which is this. This is Bill Volk, an old friend of mine. He goes, oh, man, I'm doing drag and drop splines on the Z80. You don't even want to know how I'm doing it. Don't ask me how I'm doing it. You don't want to know. Here's how I'm doing it. <laughs> You know Bill. <laughs> so, yeah, that is the delight you do not run into in gaming anymore. And that is what I've run into. I'm hearing people laughing about this shit all around. Oh, man, we're emulating a window. We're, we're emulating. We're running Windows 2000 on top of XP. I heard someone say this and just laugh like that's the funniest goddamn thing ever. So, bless you, folks. Uh, you have a grip on something that's worth doing and, and run with it. Uh, and now here we go. Uh, in, in the, the game, game business, business, we, we have, have to cram thing. We have to cram uh, art into the nooks, crannies, and other orifices of the client. Um, there was a game called Cyber Strike Three, where the developers really just wanted to make a game, and it ended up being like every other game. But they hired me to do the music, and I said, "Well, I can make this." I can bring something to the table with this music. And uh, they didn't want any tunes or anything. They never do. Uh, so I did the music that was asked for, which, by the way, never got into the game because they just ran out of time. Um, and uh, I, I did some songs. And in all fairness, they actually kind of liked this one. I think it made it into the game. This is about Jebediah Brightman, who in their plot, all you know about him is you know, he's, a, he's a charismatic... Um, cult leader who, uh, when a wormhole is discovered, he's the first one into the wormhole, he gets all of his followers together and they go off into the wormhole and they land on the new planet Siren and they establish a presence there on a third of the planet conveniently so that the other two races can land and they can have a three-way battle because it's like Warcraft with three races. So we know that, that he's Jebediah Brightman, we know that he went to Siren, we know he went into the wormhole. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, how do we, how, okay, and that's it. Now we start fighting. I thought, oh, fuck, man, we got to, okay, a cult leader. So who would follow a cult leader into a wormhole? Well, I'm, so I made up this guy. He'd have to be like a total loser, okay? And he'd have to be like re repressed homo, totally in love with, uh, with Jebediah and everything. Anything, if Jebediah says jump, he says how high on the way up. And if Jebediah says shit, he says what color on the way out. I, I wrote that, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted it to be kind of a love song, kind of a war song, uh, an exposition uh, to make the game deeper. And uh, I wanted every line to rhyme with Jebediah. <laughs> Just, Just to, to make, make it, it hard. And uh, I'm going to try it. it. Now you, you can turn, turn off this thing. thing. And it should come out here, yeah. Something not right, something not right. I want to see titties and lighters at the end of this thing.
me try zooming out and maybe we won't get those clicks. Sorry. And then I'll also remember the lyrics. He said, well, yeah, it's pretty much going the direction that you say it is. <laughs> but I said, can I... So this guy's Mark Toronto, and he's a very nice guy. He was about as high up at Xbox as you could get and still play games. He was the guy who tried to talk them into putting out Katamari Damashi, and then they didn't. Um, so he's a champion of the, of the ridiculous. And I said, well, hey, Mark, can I... Uh, what's the assignment? He says, well... We want to start with, uh, start with 8-bit, like 2D, and then we're going to show 3D, so do some like 80s music, and then like we'll do 90s music, and then it'll be like HD. Get it? 2D, 3D, HD. And I'm like, okay, that's great. <laughs> so can I put lyrics in it? He said, yeah, you can put lyrics. I, can th I said, can they be slightly anti-Microsoft? He said, yeah, they can. I said, can they subversively try to interject a kind of an uplifting morality into the Microsoft corporate culture? And he said, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> so uh, let's find Viva. 
There we are. All right. So while I was recording this damn thing, um, my, my, a friend of mine calls me up and says, uh, George, how come I wasn't in your book? So well, what, what do you mean? He says, I wanted to be in your book. Write another book so I can be in it. I said, well, what would you say? I, I, what would you talk about? He goes, oh, legends and myths, man. I said, well, legends and myths, what kind of legends and myths? And I started recording right over the track, and this is what you hear. thing I heard back from him is, yeah, man, it's great. I mean, Mark said, yeah. He says, run with it. I said, they like it? He says, yeah, yeah, everything's great. And then he calls me back, you know, 10 minutes later, he says, okay, you got to take out the boobs. <laughs> well, I'm like, dude, I, 
I'm all, I'm, I'm all for that. So uh, uh, I took out the boobs, wrote another line. But by then, the DirectX team heard it and said, we don't want to remember that day <laughs> on which we were the central point of the greatest change. You know, I mean, they were so much, when you have a dunking booze at the school carnival, it's the coolest person you put in the dunking booth. You put the principal up there, you put the, you know, you put the teacher everyone loves or the coach that, that's, that's the greatest or the prom queen or something. And they were the guy in the dunking booth and they just could not handle it. So they said, no, we, we want to erase the memory of the day that they threw the gack at us. So they said, well, can you take that all out of there? And I said, yeah, yeah but no, it's not going to be as good. And then he called back later and said, and besides that, we're not going to use it anyway. <laughs> so, but uh, so I, said, I said, you know, that's great. Let me just buy it back from you, though, so that I can use it and play it at places like this. So I ended up doing it uh, for free. But one last story is that just before, you know, when I, I suggested that, I, that we re renege the contract, uh, someone said, yeah, uh, that would be great. Go ahead and sell it back to the fat man. But uh, could you please just ask him to take out that part about the, uh, about the direct X anyway? And I said, well, I think I said, that's great, but you kind of lost me, dudes. I mean, you know, I dig the part about you buying it and owning it and controlling it. And I dig the part about you not owning it and not controlling it. But the whole thing about you guys not buying it and controlling it, that's confusing me. So get, that got through to him all right. Um, do you guys know Jonathan Colton? Yes. Yeah. I think he's fucking great, don't you? I, I, I've, been, I, uh, I've been stuck on, on one of his songs. And uh, can you kind of hear the guitar if I play it this way and sing? Uh, I think that this is a good, as good a lesson as to what's cool about music as an art form, as anything is. Uh, Last night I left a note on Laura's desk. It said, I love you, sign anonymous, anonymous friend. What is it? Anonymous friend. No. Laura's desk. It said, I love you, sign anonymous friend. Turns out she's smarter than I thought she was. She knows I wrote it, now the whole class does. And I'm all alone during couples skate. She passes by with some guy on her arm. But I know that I'll forget the look of pity in her face. When I'm living on my solar dome on a platform in space Cause it's gonna be the future soon I won't always be this way When the things that make me weak and strange get engineered away Gonna be the future soon I've never seen it quite so clear And when my heart is breaking I can close my eyes And it's already here You following with me so far? It's the nerd story, you're with it? Okay I heard him play that and I go, God, this guy's fucking great, man. Oh, but no. He's, that, he's already got me by the nuts, right? And I'm like, this is my story, right? This is, this is me. And the chords are fucking great. You took the second chord. I'll probably be some kind of scientist Making inventions on my space lab in space I'll solve world hunger, I'll make dolphins speak And then I'll probably spend my nights and weekends Perfecting my warrior robot race Building them one laser gun at a time I'll do my best to teach them about life and what it's worth I only hope I can keep them from destroying the earth Cause it's gonna be the future soon chorus And it'll always be this way Things that make me weak and strange They get engineered away Gonna be the future soon Something that did it And when my heart is breaking I can close my eyes Check this pivot out And it 
it, uh, so close my eyes and it's already here on earth they'll wonder as I piece by piece replace myself and the steel and circuits make me whole but still I'm all alone peekaboo until Laura calls me home the peekaboo is mine editorial <laughs> I'll see her standing by the monorail she'll look the same except for bionic eyes she lost her real ones in the robot wars I say I'm sorry she'll say it's not your fault or is it then she'll eye me suspiciously Hearing the way of the servos inside She'll try to run away But there's no place you can hide When a crazy cyborg wants to make you his robot bride And it's gonna be the future And chorus, oh my god, right? A hand for Jonathan Colton That son of a bitch makes me so mad He writes song after song that's nerdy. It's he's like he's doing the he's got the weird Al brick in one hand, and he's got the fucking who's the Canadian Leonard Cohen in the other hand. He's got your nuts in the middle, and he just goes wham. <laughs> and then I'm working on the the Hulk game <laughs> with the aesthetic level of the worst part of. When, when South Park is trying to make you think that they understand movies and so they like make fun of movies and they have lines like listen mister I have a duty in this country right and they play that those, those, that movie stuff so like uh, here we'll just play some of the random stuff that they had their cinematic guy do the Hulk music themes this turkey on. I, I, I lean forward out of habit, but leave, leave that on. That was Brazil. This is Gamma Seti. Bum. This is Kill Class. So I'm like all oh, fuck. <laughs> And I gotta, I gotta do sound design on these videos that are like so disheartening. Um, I really shouldn't do this to you, but uh, I think this is one. I'll just pull one up at random here. Eleven fifty-one. Okay. Unbelievable. Hulk strongest one there is! Self-destruct sequence initiated. That's another one I owe you. Hey, you ever need anything? You know, anything. Anything! You can count on me, okay? A big hand for Technicolor and the Hulk. Yeah. So, it's really not a bad game. It's just that the, the aesthetics of the aesthetics are very simple. So that's 1151, and, and that's how we are in games. It's like more is better, more like film cinematic. Oh, what did I say, 1151? Thanks, you guys are good with the numbers there. Okay, where did I go? 1151, name, 1151. Oh, that's, uh, that's reverse. Um, <laughs> 1151, NPR, we want the latest NPR, 151 CA, we can do this. Okay, that's probably it. Uh, so you got to kind of scrape yourself up off the ground and, and, uh, and do something out there. I was supposed to take sound design and make this stuff really 
as good as I could. And doing it for a friend. And doing it for the people. Doing it for the players. So uh, just to give you a little step through of what the daily grind is. Um, so first of all, you, 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 you fancy up the dialogue a little bit and, and, and add effects to the voices and, and hopefully try to make it mean something. And I pulled this one at random. I really don't remember that it does anything spectacular in any of these areas. But you get a feel for, for what's up. Um, the, uh, uh, there's a side story that's going to go with this that I can start on while this is loading. Uh, which is that as we were in the total crunch time of this game, Jonathan Colt came to town. Okay, let's see if we can get this. So this will tie back in. Oh, I was going to start my, my talk. I hit a coyote. Yeah. So everybody look under your seat. See, I hit a coyote. That's funny, I think. <laughs> Not very, though. <laughs> Okay, first the voice. Unbelievable! Hulk strongest one there is! Self-destruct sequence initiated. So we put a little effect on the self-destruct thing. That's another one I owe you. The videos aren't done. Hey, you ever need anything? You know, anything. Anything! You can count on me, okay? So you can see tremendous effort went into getting the lighting uh, getting everybody who was making a comment on the lighting to agree that the lighting was good. I and mean, this isn't even the tiniest left toenail of what I saw in debris yesterday. Oh, my God. And these guys are like, well, let's make it cinematic. Let's make it movie-like. They just love that. I mean, it's, it's, what a ridiculous idea. Nobody ever went to a movie because it was movie-like. <laughs> okay, now I add some ambience. Ambience, ho. Unbelievable! Hulk strongest one there is! Self-destruct sequence initiated. So a little street, that makes it kind of cool. That's another one I owe you. Hey, you ever need anything? You know, anything. Anything! You can count on me! Okay? That's kind of nice. And then we add the... the uh, Hello, <laughs> damn paparazzi. Can we add the sound effects? Unbelievable. Hulk strongest one there is. Self-destruct sequence initiated. <laughs> That's another one I owe you. Hey, you ever need anything? You know, anything, anything. You can count on me, okay? And that was what I was paid to do. But, you see, the guy who was doing the music didn't get the music done on time for them to put it into the videos. In fact, the guys doing the videos didn't get them done on time for me to do the sound to them. In fact, the guys doing the DS version of the game were like asking me for the voice-only versions of the, of the video, of the, of the audio for these cinematics. They are asking me for that before I'd gotten the cinematics. And they were very impatient and angry that they hadn't gotten them. And I finished scoring the cinematics before they were done. And that happens so often in games, we call that the project turning inside out. And uh, one more, I wasn't, I decided to do music for them because it was just like better. So I added music and instead of putting the regular cinematic music, I, I did a thing for that guy at the end. I can't remember his name, but he's kind of a cool guy. So I gave him some, some jazzy stuff. Unbelievable. Hulk strongest one there is! Self-destruct sequence initiated. There's another one I owe you. Hey, you ever need anything? You know, anything. Anything! You can count on me, okay? So there you go. Just trying to put a little life in there. Just trying to take a bite out of crime, baby. That's, that's what I do. You can clap for a little bit now. Clap. All right, thank you. That's enough. <laughs> so, so there's uh, the night before this shit is due. No, where was it? About, about three days before this shit is due, Jonathan Colton comes to town. So me, my songwriting buddy, who we write stuff for, we just 
to have a play date on Sunday and we get an hour and a half uh, to make noises together. And so we're working on a comic book rock opera, the first episode of which perhaps I will treat you to. Um, so there's me and Steve, songwriting buddy, and Scott, who's, you know, you saw music from Scott. Scott's the, the audio guy at Edge of Reality. He's my client. And Jonathan Colton. It's 2 o'clock in the fucking morning, and we're talking about Jonathan, and we're talking about songwriting. And of course, songwriting buddy goes, hey, uh, man, man, I'm like, I'm into songwriting too, man. That's songwriting. Yeah, 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 that's the shit. I'm going to write some fucking songs. I, I, this is how I picture the demo group guys. Okay, I picture four or five guys going, fuck, man, let's do something. Let's do something badass because we can, because we do. Let those other guys just sit around, man, because we're going to fucking do the work. We're going to do it now. That's what I, oh, you guys. And no one's going, you realize how much money we're going to make over this? No, they're all going, oh, you don't even want to know how I'm going to write this song, right? So we go home. By the time Steve has, oh, and Scott goes, I'm a songwriter, too. I'm gonna write. I wanted to write a song for Hulk too, and I'm like, well, dudes, you know, come on, let's tomorrow night. Let's go over to the studio and record whatever you've written. So we put a thing together. I wrote a song. Steve wrote a song. Neither of us finished, so we combined them into one song. <laughs> Scott wrote a song. Uh, Jonathan couldn't make it over to the recording session because he had to work because he's a he's not dedicated. <laughs> so let's see under Hulk. Uh, probably list by date and it'll show up best. Hulk smash. Okay, here's shout at the world. That was Steve's and mine. So this was recorded by the by the next day.
Well, I didn't tell you on that first song that I played you, I learned, I relearned to play trumpet for that song <laughs> because my buddy Joe threw down the gauntlet. I see in my fantasies, this is you demo guys. My buddy Joe learned to play sax for the song that he did before. So I'm like, I cannot let him do that. <laughs> so I relearned trumpet. That's the bad trumpet playing you heard in, in Jebediah. And uh, I got the French horn back out for this one. So that's, if someone wants to say, what patch did you use for the French horn? Fucking French horn. <laughs> <laughs> what patch did you use to call your mother? <laughs> so that was, uh, that, was, that was the one. Now, of course, the guys at Edge of Reality, you know, we get handed it to them the most easy possible way. Play it over the credits, right? That way you don't have to think about integrating it at all. And remember, we've got the guy who runs audio at Edge of Reality, and we're not going to charge them for this. This is totally for free, and we did it in the middle of an impossible crunch time. And they're like, yeah, we kind of don't get that one. So now here's Scott. <laughs> idea, lots of great jokes, big drums. Oh, Jan for Scott. <laughs> Scott Snyder, I don't know if you guys were ever into filking, but he was a big filker. Um, so it's for free. We're totally connected. Uh, who says they put it in the game and who says they didn't? Hands for those who think it went in the game. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. Hands for those who think it didn't. All right. Uh, I don't, I, it's only, I only complain because it's fun and it's funny, all right, and because the war stories are really awesome. I love doing what I do, love the people I work with, but the fun is in the struggle, and no, they did not put it in the game, and the reason was they were running so far behind that they didn't want to draw any more attention to themselves. They didn't want to like call up Marvel and say, oh, one more, one more thing, we're going to add a little thing over the credits. They were just like, no, we better just shit. So uh, anyway, th these are my uh, sad stories about putting strange things where they don't belong but for pay and for my, you know, for my people, my, 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 uh, the audience of the games, because I, I love those little captive critters. Um, they're my friends. And they... When they play a game, people thought I was nuts for thinking this way. When a kid is playing a game, or a, an adult, they're a captive audience for 40 hours. And back in the day when people would say, look, fat man, why do you write good stuff for them? If I wrote something good, you think I'd give it to a game? I would say, look, you know, they're, they're forced to listen. It's like they bought a ticket, like a million people bought a ticket to my concert, and I get 20 minutes of music for them to listen to for 40 hours. <laughs> And I really want it not to be torture for them. <laughs> and I want it to be maybe even nice. So that was where the seventh guest came from. That was completely the headspace for that. Um, and I want to show you guys what, we, what, what I've been doing for fun, too, because it's kind of cool. Oh, by the way, uh, the, those two songs that you just heard, that's, I don't know if this counts for the compo, but uh, this is the first time they've been played publicly and they are not published. So I don't know, maybe we'll throw them in there. Um, let's see. And... Music and sounds. I'll play you guys the world's first comic book rock opera. Because why not? And this is what we do on our play dates on Sundays. And uh, let's see. We've actually, we've had a few projects. Oh, 
There we go. All right. Nothing more to explain. This compacts down into 5K. Welcome to Jet Age Comics. This episode brought to you by Friendly Cigarettes. Remember, kids, the best tobacco you can get is in a Friendly Cigarette. Friendly, friendly, friendly cigarettes. Friendly, friendly, friendly cigarettes. The best tobacco gets. Victorious, but... 